So this is a good place to start. So here is our scale here. And then here is our first clickable link. Then over here is our second scale. And here we click this one. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in multiple dimensions, extending part two. In today's adventure, we set out to do several things. Um, we experimented with how to create objects in 3D and export them to the desktop and then bring them back in. So we created this chain link model here and then we downloaded it and we uploaded it and it turned into this, which almost looks the same. Uh, then when we textured them and made them look side by side, they look pretty close. There's a few little differences when you get out at a distance. So we successfully did that. Did that. Then, then we started looking into orality. We want not just um, virtual visual stereoscopic up, down, left, right vision. We also want to work with ears. So we actually took some re recordings from, yes, yes, yes. Took some, they're speaking of sounds. So here we have a little test panning from right to left. Crossing the bridge, you can see the little pan red line. You can hear it in our left ear if you have headphones on. So it's all on the left, file, uh, left side now. Now the trick is we actually took these sounds with our phone on the right side of the bridge was a low murmuring water and then we crossed the bridge and that that died out and was quiet and then we got to the other side of the bridge where the water was coming over a break and was louder. Um, the phone only records pretty much in mono so we recreated the experience of going from the right side of the bridge across into the left side of the bridge with the actual sound, 30 second sound file. So that was kind of cool. Then we got intrigued by the idea, is there such a thing as vertical stereo? Because we watched a video on this the other day and the answer is yes, human beings can tell when something's higher or lower than their ears because the your ear flaps or pinna, P-I-N-N-A, um, actually break the sound up and do stuff with it. And so we actually found a cool video demonstrating that here where there's a processor and it shows all kind of cool stuff there. And we had, uh, we took a bunch of notes on it here on the right hand side, conventional stereo, how to do it. The answer is basically the poor man's way to do it is high, high pitch you tend to hear as high and low pitch you tend to hear as low. So we, we're going to try that. And so the way we decided to try that is we finally, we finally went back to our scales and we said, let's make a copy that's very low. And a copy that's high. For values of low and high relative to the actual piano. And so we went into yet another tool and uh, sliced it up. We sliced, that, these are the, these are the four. These are the four scales in piano and in contrabass and here in choir synth. And we uploaded those files into our virtual reality tool here, there at piano one, two, three, four, and all that. And then we had to go get a script 
which we did in one of our previous things, this plays a script and you tell it what the asset ID of the sound is. For example, Piano 2 has a, oh God. Well, you basically just copy it this way, copy it that way. And then when you look in the script, then you paste it right in there. And ta-da, you save it, and then you've got a clickable thing. Now, the beauty of this is we wanted to experiment with overlaying the scales. And because these are two separate sound files, you can... So yeah, you can trigger multiple playings of it. And then our, since we have 12 files, we now have 12 links in the chain. So our goal is to come back and put the rest of those uh, clickable thingies in there. So, so, <laughs> it's been a busy, busy, busy day today. Um, what we will do is, uh, I don't know what we're gonna do. We'll just play, we'll play this. And here. Here. So again, those were actually created in the music program here by changing piano to contrabass to choir synth and then uh, exporting it as an MP3, export it as an MP3 as we've done many, many times, and then using this program, open the MP3 and then save it, uh, export it as, as a WAV file, except we, you know, we just cut it up into little pieces. So this is a slicing copy. So. That concludes today's stream. Our ideas for next time are to keep adding the WAV files to the clickable 3D. We want to look some more into how we save. We didn't save a copy of that um, chain and we successfully uploaded it, but when we, if we're going to make mesh objects, which is what an object is in virtual reality, and we make it in one tool, we want to be able to put it in the other tool or vice versa. Um, and we want to look further at synthesizing the vertical stereo effect, which is uh, which we're going to do by experimenting by having the choir synth on one of these links. And you know, we'll click the piano here, and then try clicking the you know one of those will be choir synth, and one of those will be bass. So that's the game plan. Um, and we found out that there's a really cool plugin called Panorama that lets you take mp3 files and massage them to sound like they're in spatial 3d including up and down however it's a plug-in and you have to have a audio digital audio station editor we do have one called reaper so that's an idea is to install reaper and see if we can get that panorama plug-in so tune in next time <laughs> who knows where we're going next except we know it will continue to be in composing in multiple dimensions, music, objects, text, and uh, do come back. We appreciate your being here. Take care. Keep on streaming. <laughs>